Hey guys, it's Tom Cherry Holmes with the FujiNet project. And I wanted to go ahead and make a quick status video showing the progress that we have been doing on the Apple II bring up of FujiNet since the beginning of the year. Jeff Peepmeyer has been working very hard in taking and filling in not only the uh, various pieces of the protocol between the FujiNet and the Apple II, but he has also been hard at work filling out the configuration program so that you can take and mount devices, put them into their appropriate places, and boot the system once you have everything configured as you need it. So with that, we'll go ahead and show where things stand at the moment. You'll see here that we have a screen. Uh, in the foreground, we have an Apple II on a capture card here, which we'll use for the demonstration. And in the background, we have a VS Code window showing debug output from the FujiNet. So you can see network traffic and commands as they bounce from the Apple II to the FujiNet. So with that, we'll go ahead, control open Apple reset. And you'll see that uh, the configuration program is actually being loaded off of the flash, and you can see it's loading very quickly. Currently, because everything is still in development, we come up to the configuration screen here so we can ensure that we're talking back and forth to the FujiNet by grabbing the configuration that's currently in place and verifying that the network uh, information is correct before we proceed to the host screen. You'll see here that we have a screen divided into two sections, or uh, actually three sections, the host list, the drive slots, and the commands down below, much like the other versions of config for the Atari and for the Coleco Atom. A big major change that has happened in the last couple of months is that config has been vastly refactored to make it easier to take and port config from one platform to the next sharing a lot of common code. So this version of Apple II Config actually came up very quickly in a matter of a few weeks of uh, spare time. So for those who have, are not familiar with FujiNet, FujiNet has the concept of host slot, which are hosts from which you can load disk images. And those images can be put into drive or device slot. There are eight possible host slots, and currently on the Apple II, there are four possible drive slots. We can flip between host slots and drive slots by pressing the tab command here. And down here in the drive slots, we have the options, for example, to take and eject drives, eject disk images from their drive slots. Hitting the tab will take us back to the host list. And for the first test here, we'll actually take and select total replay from the Apple apps.errata.online server and boot from it. We press return on Apple apps here. And since this is a brand new server, there's only one disk image that's currently on it. And that's total replay 4.01. Yeah, I would argue that's all that most would ever need, but hey, whatever. Uh, so go ahead and press return. And we're given the opportunity to select which drive slot we wish to put it into. I won't go into detail here on the mapping of drive slots to uh, positions inside of the Apple II, primarily because we're still trying to work that out. And on the smart port, this is actually very nebulous because ProDOS and the underlying smart port firmware do a lot of magic underneath to automatically enumerate devices as it finds them. So you're never quite sure where your device might actually end up. So, so with that, I digress. We'll go ahead and put Photo Replay into a device slot. And at this point, we can press Escape to boot. At which point, it forces a cold start and boots Total Replay. And as you can see, Total Replay is not on the local storage here. This is being streamed directly off of the internet here, and it's doing a decent job doing so. I'll just pick something out of the blue here. It doesn't really matter. Say Conan, for example. Sure, no problem. We'll go ahead and load it. And you can see, even here, 
as it's having to take and bounce to different blocks and things, it's actually doing a very good job of loading the game in off of the network. Even though this host from my play, from my particular geographic location is approximately 2,300 miles away. Doesn't matter. And as you can see here, it works just fine. At any given time, we can go ahead and tap the reset key. And when we do that, config will be put back into a drive slot. And when we hit the reset on the Apple II, it will reboot. So we do that. Oop, looks like we got stuck. Go ahead and do that again. Oop. Uh huh. Looks like we're still dealing with bits and pieces of timing issues from the controller here, but you can see uh, with this little stick here that we're enumerating and putting devices into the view of smart port here from the FujiNet as well as my existing smart port devices. Now you may be asking, uh, what if I have an Apple II uh, or a 2E or a particular Apple that does not have a smart port? Well, you can still use FujiNet because you can get either a Lyron card or a Yellowstone uh, smart port card, or you can use a soft SP card. And you can even take and repurpose a Grappler Plus or Super Serial card to run the soft SP firmware. You've got lots of options, at which point uh, you can take and hook up the FujiNet either to the disk 2 controller on a soft SP setup or to your smart port disk controller, and it will work. So we come back here and I'll go ahead and end this with another small demonstration here. We'll go ahead and tab to go down to the drive slots. We'll eject from the drive slots here, at which point we'll go ahead and go to our previous server that we were using for testing, atariapps.errata.online. Now you'll notice that everything is being displayed in uppercase, and that is because config is going to great pains to try and display everything in uppercase so that it can work on Apple II and Apple II Plus machine. With that said, because we're using ProDOS 2.4, uh, for our configuration program, it can run on any Apple II with at least 48K of memory. 64K recommended. But Again, I digress. We'll go ahead and load a typical ProDOS image here. And we'll put it into slot one. And we'll go back to Apple Apps. You can have different images running off of different servers, be they uh, remote servers on the internet, maybe a local TNFS file server, or even your SD card slot on the FujiNet itself. And mix and match, it really doesn't matter. We'll go ahead and select. Post slot number two, and we'll go ahead and boot. And see, this time we'll boot into a fairly plain ProDOS environment with Bitsybuy as the loader. And as you can see, everything pretty much works as expected. We can go down here, for example, and if we wanted to take and run AppleWorks, we could. No problem, run it right off the internet. Go ahead and do that. And the Apple II is honestly none the wiser because the FujiNet is doing all the translation back behind the scenes. And as far as the Apple II is concerned, it's talking to a standard disk drive. It doesn't care, it doesn't know. We're doing our best to try and appear like a normal disk drive, like a normal block device. So with that, you can see that this is actually working. And at this point, we're getting to, we're really getting to a point where things are becoming extremely usable. I'm going to go ahead and end the video here uh, because we still have a lot more work to do. Uh, and I want to take and make a video in the next week or two on A2 OS X because it can work with the FujiNet as well. So with that, uh, I'll go ahead and end here, and I'll say, uh, as I always do, until next time, guys.
Have fun.